I left yesterday in a snowstorm that was only predicted to get worse after a long weekend home in northern New Hampshire for Thanksgiving 2013. I knew when I pulled off our road and away from our land in Stark that I needed to absorb the remaining sunlight to take pictures in spite of a worsening snowstorm. So I drive on, turning the bend by the cat lady's old house, crossing the tracks and driving to the covered bridge. I turn around, sliding in the snow, and peel forward back onto the road and away from the main highway that will lead me to my reality soon enough. I pass the river, farms, and horses in the field. The lighting was sepia-toned, and I slipped by, carefully watching and admiring the quiet and snowy field. Though I want to keep driving these backwoods and ways, I need to move on. It's this terrible contradiction to interrupt such wholeness. Those quiet moments were a therapeutic dose of a much larger need. As I lurch forward, I notice that the roads are increasingly slick and I'm holding all the tension I've got in my jaw. The snow comes down harder and I have miles and miles to go. But Graham, that was why I'd left early. I really wanted to see her. My mind plays mental gymnastics, vaulting back and forth between should I stop by for a quick hug and hello, or would the brevity of that confuse and upset her? Should I just keep driving, knowing every minute counts as the temperature lingers between 30 and 32 degrees, not even to Franconia Notch? But I can't bear the thought of not seeing her. I sacrifice my own fears and safely pull up the hill and walk inside the Morrison. My jaw is now as tight as a noose. On the inside, I don't feel like the calm granddaughter who usually soothes her confused and often sad grandmother. But on the outside, few have ever noticed my anxiety, so the mismatch, perhaps as profound as it's felt in some time, continues. I round the activity room where she is not, and then... I see her, and all I want to do is cry. She walks along the wall, down the hall with her walker. She looks so old and so lost and so alone. For the first time in this whole time, I actually think, I don't want to get old. I don't want that. I feel like I'm silently sobbing as I approach her slowly, cautiously, and with a concerned heart. I bend down as she's especially hunched today and repeat my usual mantra. Hi there, Graham. It's me, Megan Lee, your granddaughter. Another first that felt harder to swallow than usual as I hear my grandmother demurely squint up at me and say, Who? Usually she rolls with the punches, cashing in her amazing social skills and says, Well, how's Megan Lee? Not today. Ever again? I'm fighting back tears and am more grateful than ever that we're alone while everyone's gearing up for dinner. The focus isn't on me or friendliness, and I can be on the brink of tears with more privacy than usual as I stand in this hall, lump in my throat, transitioning with my gram through a time and space I can't begin to label or even know how to feel. I think I'm a stranger. My beautiful but very tired grandmother looks up at me squinting and says, What are you doing? And I know at that moment she thinks I'm staff. I remind her that I'm swinging by to say bye for a few weeks until I see her again at Christmas. There's always this fear that I won't see her again. And again, I want to be a child because I don't want that. Even when I was young and free, I worried and feared death, but never felt like I looked at this closely in the eye, which reminds me of just how lucky I am. After answering her question, I reciprocate, gently asking her, What are you doing, Graham? She points to the floorboards and says she's following the panels. This word panel has been used on two separate occasions this trip. The other time she used it, she was referring to whipped cream. I try to find her meaning, and I try to comfort her, and I try to juggle my own wavering emotions as we move like inchworms in this long and dark hallway. Suddenly she reappears and seems a bit more aware of me. She asks me where I'm headed, and I tell her Boston. She mustn't remember that it's snowing, but suddenly she looks at me with total concern and perhaps a mother or grandmother's instinct and heart that never goes away. She says, well, I, I just love you, that's all. 
I bridge her thought as I've done for work for years on end and say, you want me to drive safely, don't you? She nods in relief and says yes and kisses my hand repeatedly, a gesture I don't mind, but one that we've all been introduced to with her declining dementia. I'm struck by her contextualizing, and meanwhile, I'm also worried for my own safety. Our slow walk has led us to the dining room, and another couple approaches. My grandmother buys us some extra time by graciously offering them the lead in line. She looks at me and tells me she just wishes I could stay. I share that same wish. When you see someone you love so much, looking so alone, all you want to do is love them forever and make them feel more special than they can remember. And yet tonight I can't stay. I can't warm her hands in between bites of food. I can't watch how long it takes her to eat something so simple when she used to mastermind and execute huge feasts to feed our families. I can't make her have her memory or independence back. But tonight my independence leaves me feeling just as alone. I have the freedom of my mind and the physicality to leave. While at a mere 100 pounds, she pushes her food around and around her plate with her fork, redecorating it like an unstructured mandala. I kiss her goodbye. Once, twice, three times. It's a cycle I'm familiar with, and if I could stay longer, I'd do it several more times, stocking up because I dread the day when my grandma's no longer there to kiss or comfort. And then I do it. I really actually leave. And while just a moment or two has passed, I look back, and this woman who was so sharp, the woman who brought me to bingo once and not only managed her 68 boards, but all of mine too, already no longer knows me. I am a stranger. Plain and simple, it just hurts more today. I step outside into the snow that in contrast to my fears of driving is humbling and cathartic. I tiptoe to my car where the heat is still fresh and I need to go. I drive the hilly road down to the center of Whitefield and continue en route to my other home.